Welcome to Unmasking Humanity 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglund. I'm your host, Joshua. Thank you all so much for being here today. We're broadcasting on the World's Mayor Experience platform that you can find at www.joshuatberglund.com. And on this platform, you'll find everything from immersive books to movies to multiple different styles of broadcast. You'll find education on media literacy, independent media, the fourth industrial revolution, and so much more. It's an interactive, engaging platform, and you can have a lot of fun there. So go check it out. But today, this is Unmasking Humanity, and I'm grateful that you're here. And today we're gonna to get to learn from someone that's really, really special as a true visionary and pioneer in the world of renewable energy, EVs and beyond. And I'm just really excited to talk to him. And look, regardless of what your opinions are on electric vehicles, renewable energy, whether you look at it as some part, as it's part of some agenda that's meant to enslave people, or you're looking at it as what I believe it is, as an opportunity to help the underserved and in, in, in the global South populations, the underdeveloped or soon to be developed countries. I believe that this is a really unique opportunity that we're we're in right now with not just with technology but with the advancements of the the re advancements in renewable energy have progressed so much over the years. There's so much reason to have optimism and not look at this as well here in America with some of the issues that we're seeing with our own media and the way things are being forced on us. And of course, I can't speak for other countries. But there's a bad taste in people's mouth, especially in these oil and gas loving cities that some of us live in, like myself. Like I think about renewable energies and all the job that could be, the, the oil and gas jobs that could be displaced. The thing is, that's all fear. That's all fear and we're being led to one extreme or the other. And one of the things that I love about our guest today is that I believe he's going to be able to deliver some common sense attitudes or common sense thought to this whole process. So these questions are not just designed to get to know him, but it's also designed for us to get to know what we need to know about renewable energy, electric vehicles, and so on. This is going to be, the future is going to change a lot, but I believe it's going to change a lot for the better, regardless of the growing pains. We're at a unique time in history uh, and that is really, really special. And I believe that there are people that have been held back and suppressed by, you know, whether it's not having access to the technologies or even having access to clean water and electricity. Like those days are changing. And it's people like our guest, Mr. Rue Phillips, that are a part of that change. So it's an absolute honor for me to introduce to you all. Mr. Rue Phillips. How are Thank you? Sir? I'm doing good. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for having me on your show. It's a it's an honor to have you here. And I'm gonna put, you know, your history and everything in the show notes. Uh I didn't get into reading that just because I'm sitting here looking at you. It'd be hard to do that. Um, but you're so accomplished and like I'm just I'm really excited to get into this because I I'm I'm eager to learn from you because there's a lot that I don't know. And, and to be honest with you, I've been one of those people that looked at these changes in the green energy going, what are they up to? <laughs> what are they up to? There's some, there's some type of agenda attached to this. But then over the last year, I've started to see my eyes have been open to the truth that, no, this is actually, this can be a good thing for all. So I'm absolutely honored to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm excited. You're going to hear a passion in my voice because I've been doing it now for, oh, my goodness, about 30, over 30 years in the electric vehicle space and the, the renewable space. So you're a true expert. Like, this is not – you didn't just get into it because it was a money-making opportunity. You got into it as a true visionary and a forerunner. Yes, so uh, I'm in the UK right now, and I I, I come from a, a family of electrical contractors. And when I was a youth, I, I went to work for the family business, and we were actually repairing electric vehicle chargers in the 70s uh, for electric milk floats. These are vehicles, electric vehicles that would drive around the neighborhoods in the UK delivering milk on the mornings. 
Uh, so they would go back to the depot and uh, my family used to fix the chargers back in the day. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So now I just added about 50 questions to my list, but we won't do that to you. But okay. hold on. I got to get one thing out of the way really quick because I'm a, I'm, I love metal, heavy metal. Okay. <laughs> I, is it true that you have an association or you played guitar for Black Sabbath? It is indeed. I, I have an association. Uh, they're good friends of mine. And uh, I was lucky, fortunate enough to play on an album uh, with Ozzy and Bill Wood, the drummer. And uh, yes, it, that, that's uh, another part of my story, if you like. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't believe I included any questions for that. <laughs> But I okay. wanted to get it out of the way because I'm a bit of a fan, and uh, and I was just so cool. We could have a whole other broadcast with me asking you questions about all that, but we won't do that. All right. So before we get into the 21 questions, because I'm okay. so excited to pick your brain here, I would love to know, what are you grateful for today and why? I am grateful uh, for the blessings that God has given me, uh, my health my family and uh, i wake up every day and uh, say a prayer of thanks uh, but uh, for my health and my beautiful family i love that i love that that's great gratitude all right are you ready for your 21 questions i am indeed i all am right, indeed let's, let's do that question one if you could power your house with only one renewable energy source which would you choose and why it would be solar, um, which I, I have on my house. Uh, and the reason for that, it's the, it's basically free energy from the sun. When I say free, you have to pay for the system. Uh, but it's, it's pretty simplistic. The sun comes up on the morning, and for the next 20, 25 years, uh, it's going to be contributing to your energy bill. So, yeah, uh, solar, I, I believe, is the first off. If anybody wants to go renewable, uh, that's number one on the checklist. Excellent. Question two. What's the most outrageous misconception about electric vehicles you've heard? That they catch fire. <laughs> <laughs> the uh the, the people are putting pictures on the internet yeah uh, TikTok. Uh, about, exactly yeah <laughs> about electric vehicle fires uh i mean the fact is there's probably the internal combustion engine you know there's probably as many more fires from gasoline cars than there are electric vehicles they are rare really rare uh, so, yeah, that's the most craziest misconception that I've seen, that these cars are dangerous. They're, they're not dangerous at all. Okay, so you just corrected me there because I I pride myself on being able to uncover what's real news and what's not. Media literacy is a great passion of mine. Yeah. But i got to tell you, I've seen all of these videos. I've seen videos in warehouses where they show how the batteries explode, and, and I – it, just trying to decipher what, what what's true and what's not, it can be very, very difficult, especially when you see, well, this looks completely legit. The guy's in a lab coat and he's doing, he's got a safety hat on and, and then he's showing this car blow up and, and, and you see this stuff and it's going, well, what are we doing? Is this a mistake? So how, I want to ask you about this, and this is not a plain question, but how, how do we, counteract if if electric vehicles for one are really are the the great solution that they can they're promised to be how do we counteract videos like that or news like that or information like that to be able to help educate those people that want their oil gas guzzling cars their hot rods and other things how do we bridge the gap between the two to bring them together to understand that one that's a misconception that's not true and hey you can still have a lot of fun driving one of these vehicles you don't need a gas guzzler well first off i i think there's there's always going to be um <clears throat> uh, misconceptions uh to new technology 
you know, the way we embrace new technology. Uh, I imagine back in the day when we were riding horses and we went to the gasoline car, I imagine it was the same then, Joshua. I, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't an easy transition, uh, you know, from, from the horse-drawn cart uh, to the automobile. And I think we're in that transition now where some, some of us are, are somewhat scared of, of new technologies. Um, you know, you, you get people say the iPhone. I, I read recently that the iPhone gives off radiation. You put it too close to your ear and, and they had this test and it actually showed uh, radio waves that, that you know. So yeah. I, I think there's always going to be a pushback uh the you know to a transformation of things that are good for us uh i i believe you know electric vehicles are not the do all and the end all they're a great contribution to a, a future which is imminent i really believe that whether it's a hydrogen car the electric car or the the hybrid vehicle uh it's it's a great contribution uh towards what is to come yeah I, i'm i'm starting to lean this way now as well it, i and the, i do appreciate i think the hybrid is a nice compromise yes yes <laughs> it's a nice compromise um but I, and i'm i'm still educating myself so this is why i really appreciate people like yourself willing to come on and let me ask questions so i can learn from you and of course the audience learn too because I mean, I just I can tell you what we see in the media here. I can't speak mm -hmm. on wh what they show you there, but I mean, it, it it's one extreme or the other. So it's mm -hmm. not a. It's very very hard to have a sensible. Yeah, there's pros and cons to it. <laughs> like it's hard to look at that because it's oh that's evil. Oh, it's e it's either <laughs> evil and gonna kill you or oh it's the greatest thing ever and it's just gonna, it's gonna save your life. I mean, it's one or the other. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> Question three, if you could have dinner with any historical figure in energy innovation, who would it be and what would you ask them? It would be, I think it would be Thomas Edison. Oh. Um, and uh, I would like to ask him uh, whether, uh, you know, his contribution towards the electrical transformation whether he would have done anything different um whether they, you know if he could have seen the future what would he have done different uh for his contribution towards our uh, electricity <clears throat> that's not the question i would have thought of but that's a real <laughs> question yeah i like that good job all right this is kind of silly, but just work with it. What's your favorite party trick fact about solar energy that always surprises people? Solar energy fact that always surprises people. Ah, here's a good one. That solar panels actually work on a cloudy day. That you don't need direct sunlight for the system to operate. Now, it's not going to operate at, at its peak power, mm -hmm. but as soon as the sun comes up behind those clouds, that system is ready to go. I learned something new today. Thank you very much. Sure. All right. Question five. If you had to explain skill fusion to a five-year-old, how would you do it? Skill fusion educates via a digital platform just like uh, on your computer to bring new talent towards the renewable energy transition so we bring people to a new uh, a new way of of working if you like to a new working environment we create renewable energy opportunities for young people to enter into the new age technology okay so i want to add something to this and because it seems like to me i don't know this are you focusing on the global south and and, and other populations like that that have typically underserved 
Is that where you're looking or are you hiring in major cities? And the only reason I'm asking this is because I'm the people that I, the groups I get to work with throughout Southeast Asia and Africa, even though they don't have the infrastructure or even the actual technologies yet, when it comes to the education of understanding renewable energy, they seem to know it better than we do here in America. Yeah, absolutely. About eight years ago, I was involved uh, with a project in Uganda and uh, solar was new to Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I wanted to do was create a, a online class for operations and maintenance so that when these systems were installed, that we could bring new talent, new labor for people that, that could work on the systems that, that could actually elongate the life, the, you know, service, repair, operations and maintenance. It was a fantastic project. Uh, in Uganda. So we were uh, training operations and maintenance technicians uh, the, in Africa. It was a great project. I love that. Okay. One other question I want to add. Is there going to be a better alternative for mining for cobalt, the batteries, or mm -hmm. what well, goes into the batteries? Is there going to be a better method of mining than using children that happens anytime soon? Yeah, that's really sad. <clears throat> uh, you know uh, where the, the the minerals derive from on here, Joshua. Um, I I don't know the facts, but I do see uh, a future um, that technologies will change. I really believe that. Uh, you know, when nickel metal hydride and lithium iron, uh, you know, entered into the market. Uh, we we looked at un, undeserved uh, countries uh, to get the minerals from it. Uh, I would hope that humanitarian efforts will look at this uh, and and will make changes from it. I, I really believe that uh, a revolution is uh, you know is deserved right now. We need it. Yes. Uh, as far as we need to turn around. Uh, you could say the same for our iPhones, couldn't you? The, you know the way we, we the, you know that we utilize the products that go into a, an iPhone. Yeah, it's 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 amazing what we most what we mostly don't know about what goes into our products, and I mean even our shoes and some of our clothing, and it's it it's a it's a such a weird situation to be in because once you're aware of it it's like well what do you do do i quit wearing clothes like do i make my own clothes i don't know how to do that i can barely even brush my teeth someday like yeah you no know, it's it's a weird mental moral conundrum to me but i'm hoping that to see solutions other than just me talking about it going hey what about this because yeah. it, it, it's almost like is it do you think that it's looked at as we got to do a little bit of evil for the greater good. Maybe I phrased that wrong, but is that kind of the attitude you think? I I think you know, as consumers, uh, we've turned a blind eye uh, to uh, the way products are made, where they derive from. Um, we we have become uh, greed is not the word ignorant. Mm. Uh, you, you know, to the like you said, you could point to our shoes. Uh, you, I was watching a video on a pencil, a simple pencil, and it went into the products of where we get the the, the graphite from, and uh, yeah. the, you know, and uh, yes, we 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 become ignorant to the facts of most of the the components that we consume uh, in today's society. Will it change? I hope so, Joshua. For my mine and your grandchildren. Um, the, you know, I, I hope the world would become more aware. And I, I think with renewables, it's a start. It really is a start. It's, uh, it, you know, it's like uh, clean air, for example, cleaner air. <laughs> <laughs> well, very, I, I appreciate that very much. Question eight. What's the most exciting potential application of AI and renewable energy that you've encountered? I think um, machine learning uh, is a good one. 
um, <clears throat> specifically in in my field with uh, electric vehicle chargers, uh, you know, being able to maintain a nationwide portfolio uh, where we make these systems more operable, more reliable, uh, that, you know, so that, that machine learning habits of people's driving, uh, for example, it could be Greater Los Angeles, uh, where AI could determine that uh, at these times of day, these particular vehicles, uh, these people and demographics charge here and are going to use certain amount of power. Uh, I think an advanced AI implementation with today's renewable energy sector uh, is most important. I, I really, I'm excited to see how it develops uh, for the good. I, I hear a lot of, um, let me say, skepticism, but fear. Mm -hmm. about ai uh and i think we've yet to see the application uh the where it's a wow factor it's like wow we never thought of that how brilliant it is you know <laughs> <laughs> very good uh number nine if you could trade places with any other professional in the clean tech space for a day who would it be and why wow um clean tech space i mean elon that's an easy one i guess that's a cop out <clears throat> but um wow what a great question uh you know i would think i would rather put myself into a, a spot where i could be more influential uh that you know there, there are people that are not necessarily engaged today in the renewable uh, sector but they could and they could make a difference so uh for example i'm not a fan of zuckerberg that, that you know uh but that guy has so much influence and if he one day gets it uh, and starts thinking of something that's good for mankind uh that, you know um so yeah, I, I'll fall. I'll fall on the cop out. Elon Musk for now, um, <laughs> simply because he has accessibility to the tools uh, that can make a difference. Some people don't like him. I don't know where you sit, Joshua, on this with Elon, uh, but he, he, you know, he does hold some of the tools that can make a big difference for us. Well, he does, and since you asked me the question i'm going to share with you and my answer okay. is i don't know here's okay. one N knowing future it's the future technologies is kind of my thing it it's it i started with childhood visions i never i i have been obsessed with the singularity my entire life never thought i would be alive to see what's happening now though mm -hmm. but i'm glad that i am because i'm prepared for it as much as one could be so knowing what I know about smart cities and Skynet or Starlink, like mm -hmm. I, I will always call Starlink Skynet uh, <laughs> just because of the movies that help shape my vision for what I do now. <laughs> so I look at it like this, all the things that man fears, even re the religious, religious people, what they fear, the mark of the beast, the end times, the, the prison planet, all, I see, I go, I can look at all that and go, well, that's not possible without Donald Trump and Musk. Those mm -hmm. two those <laughs> the technologies, the system, all of it are not possible without them. Mm -hmm. That said, that said, all the amazing things that can be done with those technologies. So I have to remove my religious upbringing I have my knowledge of the Bible and other religious texts. If I remove myself out of that and I just look at it from a practical standpoint going, okay, this is what they have. They've invented. I pray that mm -hmm. there's a good heart behind all of this because this has the potential to help so many people for the better that it's exciting. But I have in the back of my head always <laughs> going, Skynet. <laughs> like and everything that comes with that so i don't know i don't know and I'm, i don't want to pretend to know but i can get caught up when he talks i can get excited i can i can become a fanboy too 
And then as soon as I do that, I have a little bit of going, but he could be the bad guy too. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm an optimist at heart. So okay. I'm looking to move forward with hope. And I want to be one of the good ones that are using these technologies to help and benefit people, not enslave them. One, one has to hope that there's a spiritual component yes. above all this. Uh, would you agree? It's, it's, otherwise, we're all in trouble. Uh, if, yes. if, if it's all about ones and zeros, it's, we're doomed. Uh, we're doomed. <laughs> that's so it. doomed. We are so doomed so fast, it's not even crazy. <laughs> but that's another thing, too. And like we're going off into the weeds here a little bit. I don't care. Um, like my, I grew up, so the World Economic Forum and the United Nations, I grew up listening to everything that came out of there. I read like Agenda 21. When I first read Agenda 21, I'm like, well, I don't know if that's real or not, but that could suck. I mean, you know, and again, the lens I'm reading it through, but when that all happened and everything unfolded and Agenda 2030 comes out, Agenda 22, and then Agenda 2045 that a lot of people don't talk about. But like reading this, I'm, I, I paid attention to it. And and here's what I can say. For all the, the evil that's said about them, they did tell everybody exactly what they needed to know to be prepared for. Do you want to be successful in the fourth industrial revolution? Uh-huh. This is what you need to know, and this is what you need to do. How evil can someone be when they tell you exactly what you need to do to succeed? I I, 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 I don't know. You know, yeah. I, I've studied it. I understand the risk. I'm a part of organizations that will get me a seat at that table with them. Mm -hmm. and. And whether the enemy or not, I don't know. But here's what I do know. If we can't work with our enemy, we're never going to get anything done. Yeah. So yeah. I want to be in the game and I want to do my best to have a say because I know where my heart comes from. And I know that I look at the, the, the citizens of this world as God's children. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to make the world a better place for them. Mm -hmm. And so... If I have to work with the in quote enemy, then I'm going to do it. But again, I don't know. I, I don't have the answers there. I don't. <laughs> I think uh, you, you said it all. Uh, it's important that we understand it. Yes. It, it, you know, um, there's some bad stuff out there. We have to understand it to know that it's, it's bad and not good for us. Uh, otherwise, it would be just ignorance. If we just turned a blind eye and says, I don't want to know anything about this AI stuff, this technology stuff, that would be even worse. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's, uh... A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Very well said. Question 10. What's the most creative use of solar panels that you've ever seen or imagined? Um, I thought the most creative use uh, was in Africa. Uh, where they use solar panels to, to power pumps, well pumps. Um, so it actually, you know, for, for local communities. Um, so that's that, that's a great one right there. Um, I, I I love to see, um, I love to see applications rather than just putting them on rooftops and uh, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, third world. Uh, yeah. third world countries uh, where it's you know, creating microgrids is another one. I love microgrids. I love the sound of them, uh, you know, where standalone components and uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, microgrids and uh, pump, uh, well pumps. That's a good answer. It, it, Africa is such a great example or the, the people of Africa through all throughout the entire continent there's such great examples of being good stewards and doing more with less than anyone. So yes. when they finally have the infrastructure and the resources that they truly need, it's going to be amazing to watch them soar. Oh, absolutely. I would add desalination uh, as well. Wait, uh, on explain what that is? The, yeah, desalination where we, we take the salt out of salt water. Um, so we where we could use large solar plants uh, for desalination plants uh, to to irrigate 
like what would be like de deserted wasted land yeah so it, it's early days yet it takes a lot of power to take the, the you know to desalinate uh, salt water uh but um yeah that i think that would be a great use uh, for large-scale solar plants that makes sense i like that that's a good one it's a really good one question 11 if you could add one futuristic feature to electric vehicles that doesn't exist yet what would it be um well let me think about that it's uh uh, wow that's a great question it doesn't exist yet um oh my gosh i guess the ability to charge uh anywhere the you, you know like the roadways where you're driving on the roadways yeah uh, in, it's charging on in, inductive charging uh, i i believe that's going to be part of the future it will be uh inductive charging means that there's no physical connection between uh the vehicle and what's charging it there's there's air in the middle of it uh so that the, 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 there are some experimental uses uh, of it right now but uh, you could imagine pulling into your garage and literally just put the you know the the connection between yeah. the, the the vehicle uh, and the, the 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 concrete, if you like, would be charging your vehicle. So rad! This is so cool. <laughs> that it, it's like the cell phone chargers. You just lay your phone on top of the flat pad, and it charges. That's exactly right. Yeah, oh, we're totally going to have that soon. Yeah, yeah if the, you can imagine the freeways where the freeways were as you were driving. Oh yeah, charge it's it's uh the, yeah it's. Uh, I think it's it, it will be adopted. I, I really do. I want to be alive to see that. I really do. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, where we go? Oh, well, here we go. What's the most valuable lesson? Number 12. What's the most valuable lesson you've learned from a failure in your career? I think the most valuable lesson that i've learned is that it actually was exactly what it said it was a lesson it wasn't the end uh the, it's that the, you know it was like okay rue you got to pick yourself up now uh i could have it just cried myself to pieces or whatever but i saw it as a lesson mm -hmm. uh, to move forward uh, and I think that's the same with any of us. Uh, that you know, failure is inevitable. Mm -hmm. It's we are going to have failures. Uh, so the, the it becomes a lesson when we can use it as strength to move on, and say, okay, you know, I, I dust myself off, um, and I've had a few tough lessons in my career, uh, but the, you know, uh, pick myself up and. Uh, wrote it down and says don't do that again don't fall in that hole again <laughs> what did i learn from it <laughs> i'm stubborn so sometimes i have to fall into the hole a couple times but <laughs> i don't give up though <laughs> it's like i do get back up all right uh, i like that answer let's see oh number 13. if you had to compare this uh, if you had to compare the current state of the EV industry to a type of weather, what would it be and why? Boy, cumulus stratus. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, it's um, it gets really, really sunny, but occasionally a big fat cloud comes over, and it's it's a, a dark cloud. Uh, but yeah, as you know. I think we're we're at a point right now, uh, and I'll, I'll go back to skill fusion again. It's about education. It really is that the sun will come out from behind those clouds. Um, that that you, you know, uh, the there is there's a painful transition that happens with any adoption towards any technology. I believe that. Mm -hmm. I really believe it. Um, so uh, back to your question. 
where are we? Uh, we're not in a storm. Uh, it's not a sunny day. Um, but uh, this, you know, there's some clouds that have to clear up uh, be, before we can get to to the bright, bright future. That's a, I like that's such a good answer. And not again, not where I would have expected you to go. <laughs> but that's I, I love it. Thank you for that. All right. If you could instantly make every car in the world electric, what do you think would be the most surprising consequence? Um, I think the most surprising consequence would be, wow, we'd, we'd still have some, some gas guzzlers uh, out there. If I could make it 100% electric, the the there would be consequences with the power grid so we'd see a different uh we'd see different habits of mm -hmm. the way we consume uh, energy in our homes uh so the you know i mean the the, the peak demand shaving there there would be um what we call the again the micro grids but where the electric vehicles would contribute to the energy system so uh, like bi-directional we call it v to g now joshua i'm sure you're aware of it uh where the the vehicle becomes a battery storage tank if you like for the house next door when it needs power at a certain time of day <laughs> so uh, if you can imagine uh, a, a feeder from the the electrical substation and it's got a thousand homes on it and all thousand homes have an electric vehicle because we've just fully adopted uh the evs well certain homes would require uh more power than others at different times of day so what will happen is this v to g will itself become a microgrid. So the thousand electric vehicles will contribute to each other and triage the amount of power that's being used and required. It's like a collective consciousness, but with technology. As that's a right. Class. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's that's super interesting. I, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. They're actually doing that right now on on, uh, on pilots and uh, and test cases. Okay, all right. <clears throat> so you, I'm sure you've you have you ever used a public restroom before? I have indeed. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, like when you I don't know what it's like in the UK, but in America, there's truck stops and things like that. And when you go into the those bathrooms, you know, there's graffiti and it's usually a mess. And sometimes it's clean, but there's always graffiti. And uh, you know, call this number for a good time. Sorry, <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I'm sorry, um, but okay. Hold on, it's, this is leading somewhere. I promise. That's that's probably more appropriate. The point is this: we don't take care of public restrooms that everyone uses. <laughs> How in the world are we going to take care of electric vehicle charging stations? Because they're going to have to build millions of them. Mm -hmm. If we can't take care of the public toilet. How in the world are we going to take care of electric charging stations? Yeah, there's well, I'm a I'm an O and M, an operations and maintenance guy. I formed a company. We became the largest in America, uh, doing operations and maintenance on solar PV systems. And you could say exactly the same right now about solar systems that people spend sixty, seventy thousand dollars on. And and they think that you just uh, turn it on and you don't do anything with it, right? And uh, and it breaks just like the public toilet that's you know that's <laughs> not clean or whatever. The system breaks, the the system breaks. So we have to have some method uh, process for the systemic uh, uh, outages, some breakage. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. We, we're going to need a maintenance process and a protocol implemented to to keep the infrastructure up and in place. It probably has that social credit scoring will probably tie into that somewhere. And actually, mm -hmm. that's probably one of the one times I would be all for it because normally I would flunk that test like all mm -hmm. the time. But 
at the same time, like I, I even, I'm coming around to a lot of things that I never thought I would before. And I don't know what's wrong with me, but like, there's some times that I wonder, like, is that a good thing? Like, mm -hmm. could it be a good thing? Could social credit scoring actually be a good thing? And here's what I'm getting at. So there, I, I'm going to go back to the gy uh, gym analogy now, like fitness center gym. So I've always paid a little bit extra money to go work out at a nicer gym, work out at a nicer gym. One because I like amenities, but two, it's clean. Like there's there's most of what you pay for is that there's someone there cleaning all the time. Yep, and I yep. like that. You go to a cheaper gym, it's it's dirty. There's never toilet paper. There's like you don't know if you're going to get scabies for, on the bench press machine. It's a mess. So where was I going with this? Um, oh my gosh, I had I just lost what I this analogy. It'll come back to you. It'll That's come so back. I really had a good one to ask you. Anyway, we'll go to the next one. But before you before you move on, yeah. Uh, we, we were talking about the, the reliability that we can't even look after public toilets. There, the, you know, there is a, an expectation, and it's a mandated expectation that these systems, the EV charging infrastructure, has to be operable at 99% score. It has to be. Wow. And this is monitored. So the, the hundreds of thousands of EV chargers out there are going to be monitored by uh, operating centers, and there will be fines uh, implemented for those that uh, are not working. That I think somewhere with my gym analogy, I was going to talk about that, but I still mm -hmm. lost it. It doesn't matter. But that, oh, I know what I was getting at. So... There was a gym. This is the only gym I've ever been to in my life that was like this. It was it was a nicer gym, but the members all held each other accountable. So if you're one of those person people that just threw their towel on the floor and left or shaved and left a, left a mess in the sink, a member would call you out. Yes, there was staff there to clean, but the members held personal accountability and they held each other accountable. So everyone just took care of everything mm -hmm. and yeah. that that i what i guess what i was getting to with the personal with the social credit scoring is i wonder if because i know it's the government that's watching the eye in the sky the ai what mm -hmm. but it also breeds accountability amongst the peers does it not or does it is am i completely off base with that no i think uh you, you're on to something it, it's uh we expect society to have some um, ethics and morals yeah. in, in place. Uh, you, you know, when we go to a gas station, uh, it's expected that we put the the you know the the fuel dispenser back in the socket. Yeah, we don't we don't just fill our cars up and leave it on the floor, do we? It's like, uh, <clears throat> however, I've seen that in electric vehicle chargers. That that's yet to come. <laughs> so that code of ethic, if you like, uh, I think it'll happen. I really do. Uh, I'm a I'm a glass half full guy, Joshua. <clears throat> I uh, I have a hope for humanity that one day. Uh, you know, parenting will become a little, we, you know, we'll see that it's getting out of hand mm -hmm. and uh, uh, teaching our kids manners, morals, ethics, uh, you know, will uh, hopefully one day, uh, you know, come back into society. Um, where was I going with that? I went totally on a tangent there, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's working for this broadcast perfectly. So, <laughs> tangent away, sir. Tangent away. Uh, no, I, I miss that too. I I grew up, uh, and I'm actually I'm very grateful for this. But I mean, I didn't like it at the time when I would get a whooping for not saying yes, sir, or no, ma'am, or opening the door for someone. Like I had manners beaten into me. But I and and mind you, the method I didn't like so much. But now I'm 45 years old, and like, like I know how to be polite and ma have manners, and yeah. and I enjoy using it, and I enjoy having helping raise two girls that you know have manners, and like that. Ma it goes a long way, and yeah. it really stands out even more because less people do it, and it stands mm -hmm. out in a good way, not a bad way. 
yeah, so I want the Knicks to come back too. Yeah, I think uh, it, 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 that goes back to technology again. You know, our kids have been used to uh, the interaction with a, a screen, and, and uh, the, you know, the, 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 that's where ethics and morals and principles uh, they they don't exist on this, the, the, you know, this interface. So, so uh, again, glass half full guy, the eternal optimist that uh, we can start teaching our kids. I, I I believe it's got to come back into the schools. Uh, I really do. Uh, which uh, you know is uh, skill fusion is about teaching people kids uh, that, that yeah about the the runal. You know, I'm not a tree hugger by all means, <laughs> uh, but I, I'm an advocate <laughs> to healthy technologies. Yes, a hundred percent. Yes, because you can have balance. Because of all the advancements in technology, really, we could use less of it and accomplish more and then have more time for our communities, our family, so, our friends. Yeah. Like That's how the world is being set up if we choose to accept that part yes. instead of just letting AI. Because if you, it, it requires more self-control and discipline. But AI can create more, even though you can do things quicker, it can also create more work for you to do if you're not careful. Like you have to have some self-governance and saying, hey, I've done enough today. I don't really need to do this, any extra work. Like this made my life easier. I get to be less stressed. Now I'm going to go enjoy my family. I'm going to go watch a baseball game. I'm going to do whatever. Like we have those options. That's available now. But... Like all things, there's people falling into the trap and they're just overdoing it. And therefore, you know, it, it it's not going to work out for them long term the way they hope. Mm -hmm. so, all right. Next mm -hmm. question. What, what's the most creative analogy you've used to explain a complex clean tech concept to a layperson? Um, I think it's got to be going back to, to solar again. Mm. Uh, the, it really, it, it goes back to solar. Uh, and I think the, the most, uh, if the simplistic form would be you point them at the sun and they create electricity. <laughs> That's, <clears throat> you know, it's, uh, but the, the most complex system, um, Wow, that's a complex question, Joshua. <laughs> um, I think uh, the what I just described uh, about uh, V to G, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a difficult one to to describe, uh, where the vehicle can actually be a battery that can contribute uh, as a microgrid. And people say, well, what's, what's a microgrid? Uh, you know, and you say, well, ten people in ten houses all drive an electric car and house number nine requires a lot of power where everyone else is asleep and uh, that battery is going to dissipate and uh, power up house number nine uh, you know it's a complex uh, setup uh, that is going to be made simplistic um, that we we have to describe it to the kids uh, the, you know, you, earlier on you asked me something. It says if you were going to describe skill fusion to a five-year-old, um, I'm the five-year-old, by the way. <laughs> uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but wasn't Einstein the one that said if you can't describe it to uh, uh, a, a young child, then you really don't understand it. Oh, it's it's uh, I and um. I, I have people in uh, good friends in uh, in high tech space, and they 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 are well versed in technology, and they go around uh, they'll they'll say like thirty sentences to say something so simplistic, and I'll say to them, "What you meant was this. Why didn't you just say?" This it gets it annoys the crap out of me. It, it, you know, <laughs> they use all these big words to say something so simple. Uh, it, it, it you know. <laughs> uh -huh. 
I, I have so much to say on that that I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question 19. Oh my gosh. If you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice when you were starting in this industry, what would it be? Uh, electric vehicle space. Um, focus uh, more on a solution for uh, infrastructure. Oh. Uh, I've been installing infrastructure since 1994, and um, I've rode the political waves. Uh, that, you know, uh, it sounds crazy, Joshua, but I put them in in 94. I took them out in 98. I put them back in again in the, the, the 2000s, and uh, I, I really, I was riding the wave and uh, the, the checks cleared from these multi-billion dollar corporations that were hiring the, my company uh, to put them in and take them out and put them in and take them out. Uh, I think I would have been a greater ambassador uh, for the cause of uh, infrastructure implementation. I would have made a bigger noise yeah. um, that, you know, that says, hey guys, uh, let's not put them in, take them out, put them in, take them out. Uh, let's, uh, you know, let's lay the carpet at least. What harm can it do by putting an infrastructure in for a future de generation? You know, I asked that question. That question is usually designed for people in the renewable EV space. Mm -hmm. And every answer is way different. Um, and But out of fairness, night other than you everyone else i've interviewed in this space is relatively new four or five years six years seven years two years nothing you know you've got history you've got generation there's a gener you have a generation of time and mm -hmm. so that perspective is really really powerful and the fact that you said infrastructure that's everything that's the foundation to build on and you can yeah. you build a strong enough foundation you can launch anything from it and yeah. Yeah. No, so that that's such a I hope our future world leaders are listening to this. And so as we advance, they focus on infrastructure as opposed to some of the other things they focus on. All right. Number 20. What's the most exciting potential synergy between electric vehicles and another industry that people might not have considered? Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm slow to adopt on autonomous vehicles. Uh, I really am. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, I'm just an old fart and, uh, they, you know, I, I kind of like to sit behind the wheel and whatever. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> uh, I think, uh, that, you know, we're already seeing now, uh, that the vehicles, uh, as you're driving down the, the freeway, the demographics of your car uh, will change the advertisements, uh, the, you know, uh, which is a scary, scary thought, that, 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 you know. Uh, but I think we're going to be spending more time in our vehicles, and I, I think the technology, what goes on, uh, again, uh, aside from the autonomous, uh, you know, you jump in, and uh, I'm not sure if that's going to happen in the, in in my lifetime. Um, but the synergy uh, between our electric vehicle and our lifestyle. Uh, it, wow, that's a great question. I wish I'd have prepared for these questions. <laughs> that's part of the, That's the game show feel of this. <laughs> It's supposed to make you think, and it's okay that you don't know the answers immediately. Like that's good. Yeah, I I, I think the the synergy between the vehicle and our lifestyle, uh, where the car will will know uh, in my house, uh, it will know my plans for the day, and it will plan the trip accordingly. Uh, I really, think, you know, that that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? It's uh, that would be great. You know, as far as our communications via email, it, it's connected to my calendar. It knows I, I'm going from Los Angeles to, to Phoenix because it knows my calendar. 
and would charge and prepare the car uh, accordingly. It would map out the best directions uh, for the chargers which are available and operable along the route. And I wouldn't have to do anything. It would automatically you know, connect to, to my calendar and everything. I mean, that's so that's so doable, though, because the, yeah. ro the robots that we're about to see, because they're mm -hmm. built and being built, but there's robot plenty built already that the world are going to see sooner than later. Uh, and then even AI and how we can train our chatbots. And then so you then you just combine that, you put it in the car, <laughs> you've got... Yeah, this is all, that's all just makes, it's your personal assistant, your robot, your car, like all of it is just intertwined with you. I mean, isn't that, isn't that part of the internet of bodies, the internet of things? Is that all of Absolutely. it? Absolutely. You would think, you know, my previous company was a company called 365 Pronto. And this was formed, uh, I, I was in the headquarters of, uh, the, it was the largest solar company in the world, a company called First Solar. And uh, I was in Phoenix, and there, there was uh, about 20 screens on the wall. Uh, Germany, Italy, France, the United Kingdom, the United States, billions of dollars worth of solar assets were on the, the wall here. Wow. Uh, hear me out. Uh, I'm, I'm, you'll see where the, the connection is in a minute. And all of a sudden, and each one of these were green. Uh, each was a solar power plant. Uh, you know, and each plant was fifty, sixty million dollars and 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 upwards. And then all of a sudden, one of the plants had a, a, an anomaly, and it went red. And one of the fifteen uh, the technicians, uh, managers, network operators, if you like, picks up a phone, uh, which is the hot phone to Germany, uh, as an example. And he says, uh, hello, Margaret, I, I see we have an anomaly on uh, inverter number 14. Uh, OK, so where's Bob? Uh, oh, Bob's on vacation today. And I thought to myself, I just took Uber to this, uh, this meeting. And four movements of the thumb, I had required a vehicle. I picked one and I paid for the ride. Why can't these billions of dollars of assets use technology, AI, to figure out that Bill was on vacation today and this plant? <laughs> why couldn't it connect him to a technician? So I, I formed a, an Uber-like company uh, that actually had electricians that used an app that that. Uh, a, an asset could be an EV charger or it could be a, a solar inverter that spit out an error code and when it needed service, it automatically knew that Bill wasn't available, but Fred was and connected the two. So we're in that world now. I think the, the world of on-demand, high-tech, and, and that's what skill fusion is doing here. Well, we, the difference is what we're we're training the people. We're finding out their skill sets. We're putting them into a high tech environment, making them work ready for error codes of the future for renewable assets. Mm. That's good stuff. Wow. Last question. I'm almost sad. I think I want to cry now. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in a bonus question. Hold on. But if you could, if you had one message, you were the president of the world, mm -hmm. and you were delivering your state of the world address, and you were about to announce that, hey, world, we're going clean energy. What would your message be to sell your global population of citizens? on this shift, getting away from the old way of doing things and going all clean energy, what would you say? I think uh, the adoption people into the renewable revolution is the, for the betterment of mankind. We will be irrigating fields that, that would otherwise be um, Deserts. We're going to be putting solar systems 
uh, the, you know, that, that will power up communities that make a difference, that for wells. Uh, uh, so we're going to be using this renewable technology for the betterment of generations to come that, that far surpasses political uh, the regimes. Uh, and someone once told me, Joshua, he says, uh, you know, re renewable technologies is not a red or a blue question. It's a red, white, and blue. It's, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a little, uh, you know, corny, but it, it, it does, it surpasses the political uh, regimes. It is for the betterment of our children of the future. Uh, uh, and our grandchildren's grandchildren. So the adoption of it, it's it's a little painful to start with, but because we because we've become so um, uh, addicted to to oil uh, over the past two generations, uh, everything, whether it's plastics or whatever, we have to see a change. We've got to see a change. But there will be a positive impact for mankind. A hundred percent. And you brought up plastics, which is like one of my biggest pet peeves. Plastic pollution. It, it's now in our mom's breast milk and it's 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 poisoning yeah. our fish and just gosh, it's a problem. But I'm really excited. I, I one of my some of my favorite videos to watch on social media are the massive cleanups they're doing in the ocean. Yeah. Yes, some of those machines are amazing. They and are indeed. Are, I have so much. And there's again, it's and I hate. I'm 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 part of the media, but a different version of the media is the I'm I'm part of the the independent rise of media. The mainstream I I can't stand because they're only painting the extremes. They're not showing the hey, there's two sides of this. Like for instance, yeah. when you you brought up uh, red and blue. What they're saying about each other is true. Both sides, they're just pointing out each other's faults or they're That's gaslighting, right. accusing the other of doing what they're doing, but they're all doing it. It's like they're it, it, like, and that's the problem it, because you hear one side of it, you're like, oh God, there really are pieces of crap. But if you yeah. don't hear the other side, there's no middle ground ever. And that's so right. it, it, there's, but there's middle ground, there's real solutions happening all over the world and those need to be celebrated and it's people like yourself that are helping make that happen and and i'm grateful for that i'm grateful for people like yourself again you just you're spitting facts here you're not you're not being naive you're also not trying to sell or push anything on anybody you're just like this is a, a legitimate practical solution that is going to work yes there's going to be growing pains yes yeah. it's going to suck for a little bit but for the overall good of our grandchildren, our children, and their children, this is what we need to do. I love that approach. Okay, before I get into the final part of this, I do want to ask okay. one question because I am a metal fan. <laughs> what is what is one of your favorite memories of working with Black Sabbath as a musician? Um, I think. I was in the recording studio and uh, uh actually it was an all-star album i was the only unknown kid um uh, on this album uh, jack bruce uh, was on it uh, ozzy uh, there was the oh my gosh there's the sly and the family stone the, the ginger bakers uh, a guy called Bob Daisley who played with everybody deep purple uh, I love uh, deep purple Oh, oh my gosh so uh, being in, in a studio uh, with all these legends and just being taken from hollywood because I, I was playing hollywood at the time with my band and uh, being plucked out of hollywood and being put in the studio for two years and uh, that i was you know given the opportunity to write songs with these guys and um yeah and it was uh i co-wrote a, a song that ozzy sang on uh so i think the first time and it was finished and it was on mtv and we got on uh, <laughs> the, you know 
on rotation on radio and everything so the most exciting time but i i've got to tell you the the most memorable was when jack bruce um played a song that i co-wrote and the i'm a i'm a fan of Jimi hendrix joshua and Jimi hendrix uh the his idols were cream mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden so i'm a i'm a fan of Jimi hendrix Jimi hendrix is a fan of cream and cream is there singing a song that i go wrote uh and i thought to myself all right i can hang my guitar up now i'm <laughs> I'm uh, and it brought tears to my eyes to see Jack Bruce uh, uh, sing and play uh, this song, and 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 I thought of Jimmy. I've never met Jimmy, but uh, the, you know it was the closest that I got to my hero, having his hero sing my song. So, uh, oh my god! Uh, <laughs> I, I so talk show hosts are my were my thing. I. And I've always grew up hearing musicians. So my dad toured with Ike and Tina Turner, Jerry Lee Lewis. He had a band called the Juveniles back in the 60s. And they had a couple of top 10 hits. But I grew up, so why I got into to music the way I did, even though I have no musical talent, was my father listening to KOMA radio. I don't know if you know what that is. But mm -hmm. KOMA is out of Oklahoma. But back in the day, you could hear it at night in California because the AM station was that powerful. Oh, my gosh. So I grew up hearing stories about all of the different bands that my dad had toured with or had played with, or he would just give me the backstories. So I became interested in the host and the interviewing process. But it all started because of music, my obsession with it. So like Larry King, Don Imus, uh, you know, Howard Stern, of course, and I, mean, I could go uh, Oprah even, and even the J Wolfman Jack and it just even local radio personalities. Like I was always obsessed with them, but Larry King was one of my favorites and I was producing the daytime Emmy Awards probably six years ago and I got to meet him. Oh my and God. I, I mean, internally was freaking out like a little girl seeing the Beatles for the first time or something like, oh, my God. I mean, <laughs> I was freaking out inside. I, I, I was professional when I got to meet him. But that was like a big thing for me. So I can only imagine for you, which music, which requires real talent, you know, having them play your song. I, I can't even I, I would have wept like a baby. I can't <laughs> imagine. I, I tears uh, yeah i i had tears it's funny i went to a, a festival uh, there was a rock festival uh, here in the uk over the weekend yeah. and um there were a lot of tribute bands there was a motorhead tribute band there was a aussie tribute and uh and all of a sudden and i'm there with my family and they know my connection with black sabbath and whatever and the Black Sabbath tribute band comes on, and he said, "Does anybody here heard of Black Sabbath?" And my family was, "Tell him, tell him, go up there." Tell him. It was like, "Oh my gosh!" Oh. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> does that just bring when you when you're in those settings? Does it just bring you back to that time? And do you all of a sudden feel like you're? I don't know how old you were at that time, but. Do you just time warp back to those moments and all of a sudden feel like you're a kid again? I do. I am. Um, I have a collection of guitars now. I've got, I built a recording studio in in my house and everything. And uh, uh, I'm at that age now of what I recorded decades ago. They're they're re-releasing it. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so they're they're kind of like, hey, <laughs> you're still alive. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> you can have a number one album now. I mean, there's. <laughs> <laughs> There's albums from the 80s and 90s that are becoming number one again because of know, it's uh, and metal. Yeah, uh, metal is coming finally because the the rock music, the current rock music, sucks. Yeah, but yeah. Social absolutely. media is bringing the old stuff back, and it's like, oh, this is a good time. <laughs> yeah. I, I could talk to you about this stuff for four hours. Okay, so <laughs> what I would like for you to do, uh, the the final word is yours. So anything that's on your heart to share, share. But also make sure that you plug or you share, you promote the what where, where people can follow you and support what you're doing, where they can learn more about the amazing opportunities that you're helping create for people. The floor is yours. Share away. Well, thank you, Joshua. This has been 
one of my favorite favorite interviews it really as i i love your style it's great and uh so uh, you know if i could say anything to especially the young people that are listening to your show uh is that have a passion uh for whatever you do and i i hope for you that that passion is something that is better for mankind uh but if you do something that you with the passion it's it, it's not work anymore and you know don't consider uh you won't be a failure if you get it pick yourself up but follow your dreams uh aim high aim high because the, even if you go halfway you will have reached the stratosphere so shoot for the moon i really believe that and uh yeah uh, but thank you. Thank you, Joshua, for, for the opportunity to be on your great show.